Okay, so because I've been getting a lot of questions about the ADR assignment, I'm going to do a walkthrough of what I feel is probably the easiest way for you guys to complete this assignment, um, especially for those who have never done anything like this before. Uh, it can be a bit daunting, so there's several ways that you can do this. I'm going to post a link to the more traditional way that they do it in the studios, um, which you know requires um, several steps um, and may not be feasible for you to do, you know, depending on what kind of equipment that you have, what kind of space that you have to actually do the um, automated dialogue replacement session. So let's get into it. So you're gonna go into assets, Okay, the assets tab on D2L, you're going to go to where it says link to scene for ADR session. You'll click on that and then it'll take you to the scene and you will download it. Okay, depend on your speed of your internet connection. This may only take a few seconds, it may take a few minutes. So uh, just be prepared uh, to give it time to download. So since I've already downloaded mine, um, I'll go ahead and pull it up in Finder, or you know, once it's finished um, downloading, you will um, just pick it up from wherever you downloaded it to. So, um, I personally recommend having a specific uh, folder for all of your work for this class. But again, um, it depends on what you're working with. So, the easiest way. Um, in my opinion, is to use Premiere just because what happens is um, you'll need software that can handle the video portion of it, right, in the end, because you have to sync it up to the video. So, um, instead of working in, you know, Pro Tools or working in Audition or Arts, Isotope, whatever, um, program that's specific to audio, I'm going to recommend for those of you who, you know, may be a little bit overwhelmed by this, uh, to use just one program and the one program that, you know, the school has and is available to you that deals with both audio and video is Premiere. And Premiere actually has a voiceover um, function built into it. So it kind of um, allows you to be able to do this uh, in the same program with just, you know, a few steps. So... First thing you're going to want to do, I'm assuming that most of you guys at least know how to use Premiere or whatever editor you're using. I would suggest Premiere since, again, it's available to you at the school. Um, so you can do this um, without necessarily having to pay for a subscription. So you'll uh, bring in that file. Um, so you can just drag and uh, drop it in there. So, for example, uh, I have it here. I can just drag and drop it and bring it into my program uh, into my project panel. So when you open up Premiere, you'll have to create a new project um, and name it, whatever you gotta name it, and then save it to whatever drive you're gonna save it to. And then you can just drag and drop it in, or um, since I already have that in there, I'm gonna take that out. I can click on the project panel and then hit Command I and then I can go and find whatever it is and then import it in there. So, once you do that, um, I would suggest working in the editing workspace. Um, but again, it's all about preference. Um, when you work in the editing space, it gives you this option here, this new item option, which may appear in some of the other workspaces, but it comes up right away um, without having to do any adjustments to the panels. When you're in the editing workspace, and so what I typically do is I let Premiere kind of interpret uh, the metadata of the clip so that it's the right frame rate, it's the right uh, resolution, all that stuff, it can interpret it. So just drag and drop it onto this new item uh, button here that looks like a piece of paper with the edges folded. So since I've already done that, I'm not going to do it again. But what will happen is it will uh, create a whole new sequence named whatever that clip is named. 
Um, so you'll have you know, here I have bar scene five, and then I have the clip that's called bar scene five. So this is the sequence. This is the clip that I brought in. So once I do that, um, as I said in the other video, you want to isolate specific lines. When I say lines, I mean like specific sentences. Uh, I usually don't go over more than two sentences. Um, and really just depends on how long the sentence is too. Uh, just because when you're trying to sync it up, if they don't say the exact same, uh, if the exact same rate or pace, then you may have some issues anyway. You'll have to cut it up anyhow. So, um, once you get that in there, um, you'll want to work on another audio track other than the original. So, as we see here, the original um, audio is on A1. I don't know if you're noticing that, but you're bleeding. Right. Um, and so, I'm going to do my voiceover ADR on another track. So, I'm going to use A2. So, on uh this track we have this uh microphone icon and that is the voiceover function which um basically allows you to use your microphone and do a voiceover which is essentially what this is um, even though it's a little bit different from a voiceover voiceover is when you're just adding your voice to something that didn't have any type of dialogue or voice to it versus adr is you're basically re-recording um, someone's voice over again. So, just, you know, clarify the difference between those two, because they are different things, um, similar, but different. So, when we, uh, click on this, um, voiceover record, what it's gonna do is gonna pre-roll you about three seconds, so that means it gives you about three seconds to kind of get yourself in order before it starts to record. Um, and so, before you do that, you want to isolate those those uh, lines that you're going to actually re-record. So um, I isolated this first part of his line here. I don't know if you're noticing that, but you're bleeding. Okay, so I probably would. I don't know if you're noticing that. I would probably do just. I don't know if you noticed or not. You know, just because, but your bleeding is like a whole separate um, line in itself. And so again, it's just easier to kind of break it into smaller chunks and then put it all together just because you may not pause long enough to mimic this pause that he did in the original. And so, you know, trial and error, you'll figure it out. So um, if I play it back, which when you uh, do this, you'll want to mark in and out on those lines. So, you know, where it begins, I'll mark in. And then where it ends, I'll mark out. So again... I don't know if you noticed or not. Okay. So it's just those lines. I don't know if you noticed or not. So when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and hit voiceover. I don't know if you noticed or not. Okay. So I'm going to solo that and see what it sounds like. One of the things that you'll have to do um, if you're not using headphones... Um, I do suggest you use headphones just because um, it allows you to um, be able to hear it and then say it versus with speakers. You'll get that feedback from that proximity of your microphone and uh, the actual speaker you know, uh, producing that sound. So it'll kind of give you some, some really um, wonky noises uh, in the actual recording. So... Uh, if you have earphones, which you should, use your earphones. Um, I'm not using my earphones right now because I just wanted to kind of briefly show you guys this. Um, and so I had to mute my uh, my stuff. But anyways, I'm going to solo it and kind of listen to it now. So we can kind of see that my... <laughs> It didn't really match up because uh, I really need to have my earphones to kind of hear what he's saying. But I don't have my earphones right now. So, um, but hopefully you guys get the idea. And so you'll have to uh, try to match up. Now, I do suggest listening to it um, several times to kind of get the right timber and pacing. I'm going to be noticing that. 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 
I don't know if you notice or not. All right, so I'm gonna try that one actually again. I don't know if you notice or not, but we'll see how that one sounded. Um, so it's a little, it's a little off, but it's not bad. But again, uh, you really need to wear headphones uh, in this situation. So really I needed to kind of extend that one out. But um, when you're recording it, um, you know, you'll have to kind of make some adjustments there. But that is essentially what you're doing, uh, is redoing all the dialogue here. And then uh, what I did here was just solo it just so I can hear just what I recorded. So anytime you just want to hear just that track um, instead of hearing both of them together. Alright, so um, that's pretty much it. Uh, it will be time consuming. Um, but, you know, this thing isn't that long. It doesn't have a whole bunch of dialogue in there. Um, and also for um, those people who don't necessarily want to say the curse words that are in there i did add a um a sensor beat that you can download so um if we go back to assets uh that is right here the uh Gwaller music sensor beat so that is just a beat you can download it and um on those parts where um when i say curse words you don't want to say them you can just add that. So the same process, you go, you download it, you bring it into your project, and then you would just place it in those areas, syncing it with when they say those bad words. And that should be it. So um, just recap. Download the footage. Um, bring it into Premiere. Um, identify, isolate, just kind of quick lines um, and just kind of do it piece by piece and you'll record that with the voiceover feature on a different track use headphones uh, don't be like me where you have to mute your uh, speakers um, and you know just uh, work with it sync it up um, as you play it back you can solo it in so that you can see exactly how it sounds um, before you replace it completely, right? Because eventually you'll take this entire uh, first track off because um, we're going to be adding you know, ambient and foley and all other stuff in there as well um, for the final, which is the sound design project. So um, don't delete it until we really get into adding those other elements as well. But you can always just solo that track that you're recording uh, with your voice actors. All right. So if you have any um, questions, you can email me um, on DQL. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also text me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So good luck and have fun.